Lord is truly faithful. Thank you for that, uh, that praise song. Uh, good morning, Grace. I want to say good morning to you. This is our uh, first time live in a long time. And uh, I just want to give a special shout out to our stream team who has been doing a great job in putting these things together and, and making us look good, uh, believe it or not. But we really, really, really appreciate uh, our, spring, our stream team. And I want to say happy Father's Day to the men. Men, God bless you. Uh, thank you for being who you are. We want to let you know that uh, we want to honor you, uh, commend you uh, for being the fathers that God has uh, called you to be. And I hope that you are treated well today. I hope that your family does something special, goes out of the way to do something special. My, I left the house today. My wife said, what do you want from dinner? She said, I'm not cooking anything. So I realize now I'm not going to get my traditional taco salad, uh, but I will get something for dinner. So please uh, feel honored uh, as men. And I want to just encourage you to keep on going on, not to give up uh, as men. I want you to know how important you are in society. So I want to take time right now and to pray for our fathers. And so we would just bow our heads and, and, and ask that we would just lift up our fathers. Lord, I thank you for being a father. It's not easy. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it can be very lonely. But I thank you for these men that we honor today. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessings they are to their families. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray, Lord God, that you would minister to their hearts, that you would uh, give them strength. As you say, you give us more strength to carry on in the duty that you've called them to do. I pray for their families, that you would bless their families and give them wisdom on how to minister to their families. I pray for those who have taken the role of fathering to children, Thank you for those who have taken that role. Thank you for mothers who have had to be both mother and father. And Father, we lift these people up. We praise you for them. We thank you for them. And I pray that they really would feel honored today. We give you all praise. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So listen, I, I want you to have your Bibles. I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 48. Genesis chapter 48. And as, as we go through this, this idea of Genesis, I was, I was reading in my devotional time thinking, what is it that I can share uh, with fathers today? And I was, as I read this, I was, uh, at 48, it talks about uh, Jacob and Joseph. Now, we know Joseph is Jacob's son. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. He goes to Egypt. There's a drought. And then Jacob and the rest of the family come down. And I noticed that I was reading here in Genesis chapter 48, that sometime Jacob got older. And it says in verse 1, it says this, After this, Joseph was told, Behold, his father was ill. So he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and it was told Jacob, Your son Joseph has come to you. Then Israel summoned his strength, and he sat up. So Joseph goes to, to talk to his father, and he brings his two sons. His, fun, his father has never met his two sons. And he brings them to see his father on his deathbed. And what I've entitled this message is the idea that as fathers, we need to be speaking into the life of our children. And as I look at this, I'm, I'm looking at how Jacob, not only his children, how Jacob spoke into the life of his grandchildren. And so we can't just limit to our children, but we have to understand even our grandchildren, that we need to be speaking into the lives of our grandchildren and our children. And so what he does here. As he meets his grandchildren, he begins to speak into their lives. And I want to share four things as we talk about real quickly how we are to speak into the lives as fathers. I want you to understand how important our role is as believers. Our, important, our role is so important that we speak into the lives. And so it says there in verse 3, he says this, And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me in lust in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he said to me, Behold, I will, make your, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make you a company of peoples, and I will give you this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. I think the first thing we need to speak into the lives of our kids is our testimony. It's just to be able to share what God has done for us. How did God save us? How do we come to know the Lord? What is God doing in our life? What Jacob does, he shares his experience with God, with his son, 
and with his grandsons. Our children need to hear that. Our children need to know how we came to know the Lord, what God is doing in our life. Let, let, let me encourage you to even make it a little more personal, that, that sometimes as your kids are growing up, sometimes invite them into your prayer closet. Let them see how you spend time with God. Let them see how God speaks to you and how you respond. That's the idea of a testimony. You're leaving a testimony for your kids. And so it goes on in verse 5. He says here, And now your two sons who are born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came into Egypt, are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall be mine. And so Jacob says, I want you to know, these two kids that you have, I want you to know I consider them to be my kids. And so it really says to grandfathers that once our, our children are, are old and they're, and they're done and they start their own family, our job is not done. That we still have a responsibility to speak into the lives of our grandchildren. And I was thinking to myself, you know, that's something that I've, we've been blessed with six grandchildren. And, and we try to do that, but God has really put on my heart that that's something I need to do more. Is speak into the lives of my grandchildren. And so in verse, if you look down at verse 8. And says, when Israel saw Joseph's sons, he said to them, who are these? And Joseph said to his father, these are my sons whom the Lord has given me here. And he said, bring them to me, please, that I might bless them. Joseph said, these are the kids that God has given me. I want you, fathers, I want you to understand that your children are gifts from God. Not, not just fathers, mothers, your children, your child, that child that you have is a gift from God. God has given that child to you for a short period of time in order to raise. And so Jacob said, bring them to me that I might bless them. Interesting word. The word is the word Barak, which is the word we say for, for worship. It means to kneel down and give adoration to God. And it's talking about speaking benefits, speaking well into the lives. And so what happens here is, is Jacob, uh, Joseph brings his two sons and he sets them on Jacob's lap and Jacob blesses them. Jacob speaks into their life these things as, as, he speaks, as he speaks into their life. And then in chapter 49, he calls his own son is in. And he speaks in each individual son. He speaks a blessing into their life. I, I, I want to say to you, there's one thing, fathers, we need to understand. There's something that is missing in our society, and that is the blessing. That is the blessing. We, we, are, we have a society that is full of, of curses, a society that's full of what you can't do and how bad you are. And our children need to hear a blessing. They need to have our, our, our fathers speak positive into their lives, speak into their lives in such a way that there's a book I would recommend, and we may even go through this book at some point, called The Gift of the Blessing by, uh, by, by Smalley and Trent. And in there he talks about the idea there that this is a, that what we need to do, we need to show appreciation for our children, we need to pro show protection for our children, and we need to affirm our children. And he goes through and talks about how do you give this blessing? How do you pass on a blessing to your children? How do you see and speak into your children's life that they have a future? That God has a plan for their life. That God wants to use them. That God wants to do great things for their life. To speak into their life that God wants, to, wants them to hear him. And so, fathers, that comes from us. It's not going to come from anybody else. We have to speak into the lives of our children. And so Joseph comes and he brings his children and his father Jacob blesses his children. He speaks into the lives of his children. I think the third thing we also need to do is we're speaking to the lives of our children. We need to speak into their lives the fear of God. We need to speak into their lives the fear of God. Psalms 34, verse 11, David says this, Come to me, children, and I will teach you the fear of God. See, you understand something? The fear of God is something that's taught. It just doesn't happen. David said, I, I, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to make it a point that I'm going to speak into your life that you might fear God, that, that you might take God seriously. It, it's, it's not just going to happen. We just can't send our kids to Sunday school and send our kids to Christian church and church and expect they're going to get the fear of God. It happens as a father. I take the responsibility to let my children know they need to fear God. To understand that the idea of fearing God is I need to take God serious. That God is important and God is serious in my life. And that is passed down from father to generation to generation. And so they need to see that in me. That I am Fearing God. If there's one thing that we need in society today, not just in society, in the church, if there's one thing that is lacking, not only in the church, but in the pulpit, 
It is a healthy fear of God. People don't fear God today. They don't fear God. They're not grown up to fear God. And as a church, we need to understand that starts in the home as we talk about fearing God. We have a guy in our council, he says all the time, he says, my, my, my burden, my concern is we're not teaching things in the home that need to be taught. And I have to say to him, you know what, I agree with you. I think the fourth way that we need to speak into the lives of our children is found in, in Proverbs, Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. We, we, we need to speak into the lives of our children in, in this way. We need to speak through our life. And this is probably the most powerful way that we speak into the lives of our children. We speak through our life. Proverbs 23, verse 26 says this, My son, give me your heart. Trust me with your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. We, we say this, that more is, more is caught than is taught. I think of my own kids. You know, I, I sit back and watch them and think, you know what? I see habits in them that were in me. And I said, I didn't, I didn't mean to teach them that. Uh, this idea of lateness, I didn't mean to teach them being late. But you know what? They caught it. And so more is caught than what is taught. And so we need to understand that our kids are watching us. And we need to speak into our kids' life this idea of allow, allowing them to observe us, allowing them to watch it. And it's very interesting that in that same passage in, in cha chapter 23, Solomon goes on to tell his sons, not only do I want you to give me your heart, but I want you to watch me, but he says this. He says, and I, want you to, I, I want to tell you about certain women you need to stay away from. Now, it's very interesting. If anybody had a conversation about women, it probably wouldn't be Solomon because Solomon had his issues. So the idea of observing my life is not just observing my perfect life, but I want to also allow you to observe the things, the times when I messed up. Observe how I blew it sometimes. And I want you to, to learn from my mistakes and being honest enough to admit my mistakes. And so I, I think we need to share our testimonies. We need to share what God's done in our life as, as fathers. We need to also be able to, uh, to, to not share what's done in life, but we need to talk a blessing. We need to speak a blessing to the lives of our kids all through. And, and that's not just our young kids, our adult kids need fathers speaking the blessing into their life. We need to make sure we're teaching them how to fear God. We're speaking to them that they fear God. And we need to also understand that we speak through our lives. The most powerful way that we speak is through our lives, how we live this life. Now, fathers, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you assignment. Oftentimes we do it at home. And I, I want to give you this assignment as we talk about this idea of at home. Uh, what I want you to do, first of all, is this. I want you to to take time and, 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 and think about the things that you need to be speaking into the lives of your children. Go to God and say, Lord, what is it you want me to speak into my lives and my kids? What do my kids need to do? My young kids, my adult kids, my grandkids, what do I need to speak into their lives? And I want you to write those things down. Write those things that you need to speak down. And then I want you to come up with a plan. Now, this is an assessment. You've got to get away from your family. You've got to think this through. But it's so important that you do because God has called you and I to be the leaders in our home. And so I need to write these things down. I need to write these things down. And then I need to come up with a plan. What is going to be my plan for putting those things in place? And I have to be, as I look at this, I have to be, I have to be proactive about it. I have to be intentional about it. What is going to be my intentional plan? and putting these things to place. And then the last thing I would say is this, by God's grace and by God's spirit, work that plan out. Put it into action. Because you know what? No one else can father your children but you. And you need to make sure that you are the one fathering your children. All right, Grace, I, I, I wanted to do something uh, really different today. And I wanted to have a discussion as, as we take this idea of speaking into your, the life of your children and uh, making it practical. And so uh, I, I wanted to have a, a discussion here. And uh, before we do, I'm just, I'm just going to pray. Uh, Father, right now, I pray you bless our time. Uh, open our hearts. Give us your grace, your wisdom to communicate the things that we need to communicate uh, and from the heart. And we'll be sure to give you all praise in Christ's name. Amen. So I, I, I wanted this to, this to be a discussion. So I'm, I, I have somebody I asked to come to be a guest, and I'm going to have you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, Trey Clark, um, your son? My son, okay. <laughs> uh, if, 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 you, if you've never met my son, this, this is my son, and I, and I really appreciate you coming, man, and doing this. Uh, 
And again, I, I want us to speak heart to heart and just have a, a discussion. So as we, as we look at um, pouring into the lives of your children, I, I want you to sort of think through what are some of the things that stuck out to you that I uh, spoke into your life uh, as, as a young man coming up? Um, mostly just um, keeping God first, respect, uh, character. Um, all you have in this world is your good name. Um, being a gentleman, chivalry, you know, open the door. Um, you see like an elderly woman, elderly person standing up when you're sitting down, offer them your chair, uh, things like that. Uh, being where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to do for big. And then other things that I feel like you just led by example um, were just in providing for your family yeah. as a man. Uh, so, if I had to narrow it down, I feel like it's a lot over 30 years at this point, yeah. but those are the things I would say. Good. Thanks, man. Good. Good. Great. Um, now, as, as one of the reasons I brought you up, because I wanted to just also discuss uh, this idea, because it may be different for different families, but also in, in the African-American family, mm. uh, there are things that, uh, that need to be passed down a generation to generation. And uh, oftentimes we call this the conversation. And so the, the conversation is, uh, what are the things that my children or my son needs to know as, as a black male in this society? How he's to carry himself in, in, in this society? And so, and so we, we've had those conversations. Do you, do you remember what age you were when, when you and I had these conversations? Uh, I want to say they started probably when I was like, I was young. It's like little stuff, probably around seven, and I don't feel like they ever really stopped. It was just certain things that um, we talked about. Even when I started driving, of course, that was that was a whole other conversation. Um, so I probably started then. Another one when I was maybe like twelve, entering like middle school, and then right before I started driving, okay. so around okay. sixteen, seventeen. So it's pretty much habitual. We just, we just continue Basically. this thing through. Um, what, what are some of the things you remember about those conversations, uh, about what, talking about what, it, what, what you need to know about uh, being an African-American male in, in society? Um, there were two things specifically. Um, one was you said you already have two strikes against you. You are a male and you're a black male. Um, and I think that's one that stuck clearly. Um, the other is just working twice as hard to have just as much. Um, and just also about things I may face. Uh, discrimination and, and dealing with uh, police, uh, things that I needed to do as far as, like I said, when I started driving, just to keep, just be aware. But if I get pulled over, have everything out, have everything ready, hands on the steering wheel, uh, turn your dome lights on, uh, keep your hands visible and out. Yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am and just to not give them any reason for me not to be able to come home yeah. that day or night. Um, I think those were the, the, bit, the big things. And, and just that the, I'm going to be judged for the color of my skin. I mean, I could be followed around the store. I could be like, these are just things that we, I could potentially deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Would you, would you say, um, so, so as we look at that, the, the significance of the things that were taught, um, how significant were those things to the things you experienced? Um, very. I, f I feel like, that's not funny, but I feel like um, I faced, you know, discrimination, prejudice throughout my life, um, whether it be school into adulthood. Um, you, you deal with um, 
you just deal with certain judgments, certain bigotry, pe prejudice. Uh, and, and when you don't fit the mold of what you, of what they, or what people think you are, you are kind of the exception to the rule as a black person. Um, and just representing your whole race whenever you step out. Uh, and I think it was very important, even with, with dealing with um, police, I've, I've been pulled over and got an attitude um, about something that's not even that serious. I'm like, you know, just normal speaking, but you're, you're coming at me as if I was you know, just speeding. I wasn't you know, just rob a bank or anything like that. So it's just it's typical things that, I, think, I can't even say typical, it's just things that we faced. So, so, so what would you say if um, people say, well, you know what, and, and, and again, this is the kind of conversation we're talking, and, I, and I'm not alone, so I, I don't think this is just conversations that, that African-American fathers have with their sons or even now their children. Mm -hmm. uh, other, other people may have those kind of conversations too, and they're, and they're important, but what would you say uh, if someone says, yeah, but when you have those kind of conversations with your kids, you're instilling in them a victim mentality? I feel like that's a little, that's a little ignorant um, to, to accuse someone of instilling a victimized mindset into their kids. I feel like as parents, what you do is you teach your child based on your experiences and what you've seen and you're warning them of potential obstacles or dangers that they might face just in life and for um, me, as an African-American male, that's just the reality of what it is and what I may experience as African-American male, just being a black man. So it, to, to say it's a victim mentality is kind of based in ignorance. I feel like we as people kind of struggle with seeing other perspectives. And just because something isn't true for you or just because you didn't deal with it uh, doesn't mean that it's not true for another person. Yeah. So for us to judge or anyone to judge what you choose to teach, you know, your kids, unless you're teaching hate or whatever the case may be. And it's, I don't, I don't think it's a victim mentality at all. I think it's just, this is, can potentially happen. So I don't want you having like a culture shock and be shocked by this if it does happen to you. Like yeah. understand that, you know, this world is not always for you. Yeah. And, and, and I want you to be able to handle yourself too. when, when Right. Now, when it happens, I want right. you to be able to handle yourself when that when that kind of thing uh, does happen. And, and, and I, I remember, I think I shared with you when when you were born, how I uh, prayed and cried to the Lord because my 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 heart was, Lord, I don't want to see, I don't want to see my son become a homicide statistic. Mm. And and so I, I I pray, Lord, show me how to lead this young man. And and I and I just want to say, not that I've done a great job. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm really proud of the young man that you have become and uh, how God is working in your life. Not only a young man, I'm, I'm proud of, of the godly man uh, that you have become. I, I, was, I was on a, a Zoom call. I am pretty amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was on a Zoom call uh, a couple of days ago, and one of the guys on the call, um, his, I'm not going to tell his name, but if I told his name, you wouldn't know who he is. And he's a, he's a pastoral friend of mine. And he was sharing with me an experience that he had a couple years ago. Uh, and he is, again, he's pastoring a church and he's, he's coming home uh, from, from church. He has this youth pastor with him and he's driving home and he gets pulled over by the police. Mm -hmm. And he's about a block away from his neighborhood. And the police pull him over and he, you know, he's sharing that he doesn't know um, why the police pulled him over there was no reason. And, and then the police asked him questions. Where are you going? Where are you coming from? What are you doing here? And um, as they go on talking, he tells them, I, 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 live, I live right around the corner. That's where I'm living on my way home. Uh, the police doesn't believe him. They don't believe him. So as, as I'm sharing this, I, 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 as he's sharing this, he's sharing this with frustration. He's sharing with hurt in his heart. And so the police says, I, uh, we, we want to search your car. 
And he said, well, you know, I, I, have, I have rights. You, you, you can't ser search my car unless, right. unless you have uh, the right paperwork to search my car. And he said, when, when, the, when he said that, uh, he said the policeman then pulled out his gun and his partner on the other side and demanded that they get out of the car when that was said. Now, mm -hmm. I, I, and I've said this before here, and I want to say it again, um, we're not anti-police. Right. We, we, I appreciate and love what police do, and there are 99% of the police are doing a great job, and they're serving their community with love, they care about people, they love people, so that's not the issue. But in this, in this situation when he shared that, when he would not allow them to share, they pulled out the rifles, made, they pulled out the guns, made him get out of the car, and he said that if it wasn't for the people in the yards, which were his neighbors, mm -hmm. who witnessed this, who came to the police and said, no, we know him, he lives around the corner. He says, I'm not sure what would have happened in that situation. I'm not sure how that situation would have escalated. And so um, that happened, they, 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 you know, he went to his house, the, the officer never apologized, never said what they pulled him over for. But I think, I think sometimes in the African American community, as a father, I need to know that I'm sharing with my son how to respond. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can respond right and right. still bad things happen. But, I, but, I, but, but my, my feeling is this, I want to let you know you, you need to comply. You know, you, you, and I'm not, I'm not saying he was wrong for sharing his rights. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe this may sound selfish of me. I hope I, don't, I hope I don't sound selfish in saying this or even wrong in saying this, but I, I would, I would rather fight for your justice with you than to fight for your justice for you. That makes sense. So what I'm saying is, as a father, I want you to do everything you can do to conduct yourself so that you're here, you know? Uh, because, you know, I, I, I need you here. I love, I love you. And not just you, Grant, I, I love you, and I, I need you here. And so I, I think that's important uh, as we look through that. Um, so let me ask you this, as we think through this, uh, now you may be getting married here and starting a family. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is necessary for you to teach your kids? What, what are the values and things that, that you need to, to instill in, in, in your kids? Uh, yeah, that's definitely something I have to talk to my um, fiance, my future wife, my beautiful black queen that she is. Um, about the things that we want to teach our kids. But for me personally, I, um, I feel like respect, um, just character, honesty, keeping God first, um, I feel like it's really a lot. <laughs> I would want to teach my kids, especially with just the times that we're in, um, just to be aware of their surroundings, people that they hang around with. It's, and, and a lot of it is just about, like you said, about them just being able to come home, keeping them safe. And yes, I understand that God has them, but we, you know, I, I definitely want to instill some things in them that give them the tools that they need to, to navigate mm -hmm. through this world and, and to also be strong and of character. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are just probably the, the most important things. But again, I can't. We'll be up here for a while if I can't talk about everything I want to teach my kids. So. Well, one, one thing about parenting is you, you, you learn as you go. There, 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 there is no book. I, I wish right. there was a perfect, well, the, Bible's, the Bible is, is a book, but there was a perfect do this, do that, and uh, you learn as you go. And a lot of people are experts on parenting who have never had kids. And once they have kids, they realize I'm really not an expert on parenting, you know? <laughs> There's a lot more to this than, than, what, we, than what we experience, what we think. Uh, but man, thank, I, I, I want to thank you, man, for, for, for coming in and sharing. Again, I, 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 I think I tell you this, but again, I've said it before, I, I, am, I am extremely proud of you. And 
proud to have you uh, as my son and uh, to bear to bear your name. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to say something. I'm going to ask you to do something before we close out. Yeah, I didn't tell you that. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, so um, one of the things that God has been placed in my heart is as we talk this thing through, and I, and I hope this is, gives an understanding of, of just, uh, just culturally some things that need to be taught because of, of how society is, that we may be godly examples. Um, one of the most important things, fathers, is you speak into the lives of your children. One of the most important things that you can speak into their lives is a need for Jesus Christ. They have to have a need for Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12 uh, says uh, that as many as received him, to him he gave the power to become the children of God, to as many as believed on his name. And I may have said that backwards. I don't have it in front of me. But uh, listen, this is the most important thing, that God wants to be our father. And God has no stepchildren. God has no grandchildren. Every person must come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he becomes our father. He gives us the power to become our father when we put our faith in him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I just want to challenge you. If, 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 if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you can't say that God is my father, and we, sometimes there's a mistake in that. People think that we're all children of God. No, we're not all children of God. We're all creations of God. But only those people who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ are the children of God. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, I, I want to encourage you uh, to understand your need, how much he loves you, and come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There will be some, something may come up on the screen, how you can get a hold of us, and how we can let you know how you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, which is the most important thing that any father or mother can pass on to their children. I, I, I didn't ask you about this, but uh, uh, the praise team is going to come um, and uh, sing a song. Uh, but this closes out in prayer. <laughs> yeah, I got you, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why I thought it, I didn't know what you were. Had up your sleeve. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for bringing us here today. I want to thank you for my father and just giving him this heart for and passion for ministry and how he wants to speak and reach people and even during these times that we're living in he still wants to reach out and be able to un have an understanding that we can all understand each other and show love i just want to thank you for this day i thank you for um waking us up i want to just pray over um today that you just bring us all here that are here safely take us safely home keep us safe through uh, this pandemic that we're living in, these times that we're living in, and just be a constant reminder that we can always trust in you and depend on you um, during this time, no matter what's going on, no matter uh, the, the issues and the diseases and politics, that you are always in control. And I just want to thank you for the fathers that you have put in our lives, and I just pray that you stay with them and, and speak to them and help them to to continue to pour into their sons and their daughters and to their families and help um, help me as well and just and just growing in that way and just leading by the example and following the example that my father has set for me and your name I pray amen thank you